Blake was born on the 28th of September, 1757, here near Carnaby Street, London, also birthplace of the swinging 60s. At four, he saw his first vision, God's face pressed against the window. By nine, he was seeing trees filled with angels. Blake was very, very close to Robert, his youngest brother. They, quote, delighted in each other's company, like lovers. It said the word lovers was not too strong. He left home at 14 to learn the craft of engraving and to see more visions. Working in Westminster Abbey, he often saw Christ and the Apostles walking up and down the aisle. He also saw the remains of Longshanks, King Edward I, when his tomb was opened 500 years after his death. A bit weird? Blake said the king's face was like chocolate, with fleshy eyeballs still moving in the sockets. Mm. I like that. <laughs> Wordsworth was born in Cockermouth in 1770. He said his early life was a giddy bliss. Then calamity. His mother died. His sister Dorothy went to live with an aunt. He was sent to this boarding school here in Hawkshead. At 13, his father died. The effect? He matured even more quickly, enjoying female company. He even took dancing lessons to increase his girl meeting opportunities. Walking these woods and fields, he wrote his first poetry. He may well have had his first sexual encounter behind this very wall. Amazing how well some kids cope with tragedy. Compared to our other heroes, young Wordsworth seems well adjusted. Why do you wanna make those eyes at me for if they don't mean what they say? Samuel Taylor Coleridge was born here in Ottery St. Mary, Devon in October 1772. Fighting his brother Frank, who had apparently crumbled his cheese, young Sam thrust a knife into him. Then, frightened of his parents' anger, ran away to spend a freezing October night asleep on this riverbank. At eight, his father died. Sam was sent to Bluecoat School, London. It was a strict Spartan regime. Caught crying on his first day, a master was heard shouting, Boy, the school is your father! Boy, the school is your mother! Boy, the school is your brother and your sister! The school is your first cousin, your second cousin, and all your relations. Boy, let's have no more crying. It was at Bluecoats he would first be given opium to ease his rheumatics, not his sore behind. That Bluecoat school, pretty tough. Bet no one touched his cheese, though. With his father already dead, Byron's moody, erratic mother scolded and beat him. But May Gray, her maid, comforted and caressed him, often to a pleasurable climax. In 1794, aged 10, he became sixth Baron Byron of Rochdale, when his grandfather was hit by a cannonball. He excelled at Harrow School. Without May Gray to lend a hand, fellow pupils provided sexual gratification. At 15, propositioned by Lord Ruthen, Byron said, I am the hunter, not the hunted. When he told his mother, she flew into a jealous rage. It seems that she was betting Lord Ruthen herself. A turmoil of physical passions and desperate emotions was how Byron described his youth. Hey, he wasn't kidding. Shelley was sent to boarding school at the tender age of 10. The other boys called him a girl in boys' clothing. He couldn't play schoolboy games. 
marbles, leapfrog, and worst crime of all, he hated cricket. I can understand that. At 14, he went to Eton. Back then, public schools were places of bullying, riot, sodomy, and occasional classical grammar. Shelley only hated the first two. A curious friendship developed with Dr. Lind, the King's doctor, who lived across the Thames at Windsor. He encouraged Shelley's unorthodox behavior. Shelley set himself on fire, intent on raising the devil. Shelley watched Saturn through a telescope, convinced aliens lived there. His fascination with chemistry, still linked with alchemy, was the final straw. His father said he was mad, wanted him committed. But Dr. Lin said Shelley was just growing up his own way. An arsonist, an alchemist, little green men. I wonder why they called him Mad Shelley. Okay then, it's out of short pants and goodbye childhood. But just as kids today love their pop music, 200 years ago, was poetry really the big thing? Mom! Well, poetry dominated the scene in much the same way that music does now. And being a star performer, what it meant in the 18th, late 18th century was you would be invited to um, fashionable houses, aristocratic houses, and the entertainment would be some music and above all a recital. And the recital is poetry. And what people, for example, Byron...